Coventry, a city like most others in England, a city with history, a city with beauty, City like no This is the Coventry Motor Fest, an event that is now in its fifth year of running, and with a mixture of cars and motorbikes making display runs on the Coventry Ring Road, along with drifting and classic car displays, there truly is something for everyone. Year, a new element has been added to the event. The first legal competitive street racing in the UK since 1990. And with a new main sponsor in Powermax, this promises to be the most exciting motor fest yet. <laughs> I think, well, it was, I know, my mum tells me that she taught me the names of cars before, you know, kind of before I could do anything else. So apparently well, some of my first words were Ford Cortina, which, uh, you know, is a bit worrying, really. <laughs> but I've always been into them, and I started mucking around with push bikes when I was in my teenage years, um, and then had my first Triumph when I was 16. Um, and then I had a load of Triumphs, um, so it's quite nice to be working on this little Spitfire again, which my son's just bought. But then, like Darren, I got hugely into French cars, uh, so, you know, that's how I got into them. <laughs> I love variety at Motorfest. The thing, well, the thing I love about the festival is there is so, many, so much different stuff there. So this year we've got this, you know, kind of 1920s Alvis on track going right up to the latest electric Jags and everything in between. So if there's a car that I like to see at Motorfest, I love to see the stuff that was made in Coventry. Um, I like a Triumph TR5, that's a bit of a, bit of a thing that I like to see. Um, I love seeing exotic uh, Citroens, you know, Citroen SM, Citroen Maseratis are always lovely to see. Um, but also, we, I love the mundane stuff, you know, the stuff that nobody cared about um, back in the day that people have preserved. So, you know, actually, I think a couple of years ago we had a beige Metro at the event, which was just awesome, because this thing was mint and somebody bothered to preserve a beige metro. You know, that's great. Some of the challenges. Uh, well, when it gets to two weeks before the event, um, it's like trying to nail down a jelly. Um, the event's still growing, um, and so every year, it's like a new festival in terms of layout. So right now is opportunities to get to do what I'm doing at the moment, which is spending a bit of downtime doing some welding and what have you, um, is, is, is you know, kind of difficult because uh, there is so much that has to be done. So today I've signed off the event guide, I've got banners ordered, I've got um, all of the uh, setup instructions they emailed out to all the exhibitors and we've got three times as many exhibitors this year as last year. So we had to write a whole new load of event instructions. So there's just so much to do. And at the end of the day, we're, you know, kind of a small volunteer team um, with a bit of help. And uh, yeah, those are the challenges this time. I was helped, it couldn't happen without volunteers. Um, so, you know, it, the, the event has grown on, you know, enthusiasts like myself getting together, loving the city, loving Coventry, loving our sport, loving our hobby, and making the event happen. And that, that is what's happened, you know. So, although, yeah, there's challenges working with volunteers, but the point is, there wouldn't be a Motorfest without the, uh, the dedicated enthusiasts that make it happen.
I first got into racing years ago, like so many of us, with our you know, kind of dads and parents introducing us to the sport. My mum used to be the secretary for um, an organisation called Brisker. Um, that was the stock cars, and this was talking back in the 60s. And she used to run all the stock car meetings, and she's always been kind of interested in motorsport. Uh, but my dad used to take us along to Mallory Park and to race meetings at Silverstone. Um, just to see, just to watch, and we were always exposed to it from a young age. So I guess that's where we kind of developed the passion for it. Um, and then we started to get involved in track days. Um, we got a bit bored of watching and wanted to start doing. Um, started doing some track days, and from there it's just a natural progression into actually taking the plunge into racing. So yeah, it's always kind of been there, um, but it was just this step-by-step -step way into getting into club racing that we uh, that we followed proudest moment of my racing career well firstly club racing isn't really a career i've got to be realistic about it i think the proudest moment was um, the first race that we ever did um, with a good friend we do endurance mini endurance racing so we get to share the experience with friends and that's what's kind of important for me but the first race we ever did it was such an achievement just to get the car to the meeting and onto the start line for the race. I think it was, it was that. I think it was just that we'd made the decision to do it, wildly underestimated how much time, effort, money it was going to take. And that effort in the week, in the run-up to the first race, was absolutely monumental. So that's probably, just in itself, was the best achievement that we ever managed. Have I started planning the racing lines for Coventry Motorfest? Well, I did design the circuit um, and I have kind of worked on every year changing and tweaking the design of the circuit. So you could say I've got some insider knowledge, um, so it would be fair to say, yeah, I've got a rough idea of how I'm going to be approaching this meeting, that's for sure. Power Max have been coming to Motorfest since the event began and they will also be competing in the street racing this year with their British touring car team. Why did they decide to become the main sponsor of the event? And what keeps them coming back to Motorfest every year? Yeah, we basically kept on increasing our involvement. We started off in a gazebo, then we had a show trailer. Um, last year we had this, our converted, uh, converted shop lorry um, that we're standing in now. And it, uh, really, we're going to struggle to go much bigger and better than, than what we've got. So uh, it was a natural progression to increase the level of sponsorship of the event and become the title sponsor. Uh, I just see the potential is growing year on year um, by significant numbers. Uh, it's free to get in, uh, which is, 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 is a major contributing factor to, to why it's growing, I think, really. And, you know, the action on the track and around, it's a great family atmosphere. Uh, Senna Proctor has been here driving for us, so he's one of the youngest guys in the British Touring Car Championship. Uh, won the Jack Sears Trophy with us last year, stayed with us for his second year won a race at the first round at Brands Hatch and has uh, come along to this weekend to drive the Powermax Tag Race in Astra. Yeah, I love the Motorfest here at Coventry, you know, we, I came last year and we did quite a lot of demo runs and uh, the last two days we've been competing in the sprints, so that's been quite good fun. Uh, there's always some great fans about and sort of looking around, a lot of enthusiasts uh, and some lovely cars as well, so it's nice to be involved with it. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's um, you know, it's this sort of uh, a, a first today that they're actually uh, running the running an actual sprint sprint race on the circuit. So that's um, that's great for everyone involved. You know, it's, it's what um, it's what all the whole of Coventry Motor Fest has been working towards for the past five or six years, and you know now it's becoming sort of a reality that you know we are actually competing on the streets. Um, it'd be nice to probably do a street race in, in a British touring car, although there's probably not enough room for us to all get through. But yeah, it's, it's a great event, and we're coming to it. I just love the fact that it's so accessible to everybody, you know, I'm here with my family and I can enjoy cars in a much more relaxed environment than you can usually at a, a motorsport event. Um, it's, it's great for the whole city, this, you know, you can come to Coventry and, and, and on a normal day and then come, come this weekend and how, how alive the city feels is, is absolutely fantastic and it's a good thing for motorsport, anybody interested in cars and it's a good thing for the city of Coventry. <laughs> yeah, it's quite it's quite nice to sort of have no pressure as well today. You know, drive this drive this lovely Vauxhall Astra. You know, prepared by uh, Power Max Racing. It's just it's just great to sort of jump in it, have a ride round with no with no sort of pressure on me, and sort of do my own thing and get get to enjoy actually driving the car and you know what the car's all about than um, than having the pressure of competing as such.
Um, from quite an early age, um, I've always been into cars. My uncle used to race classic minis, and there are pictures of me as a little one sitting in the passenger seat with a bobble hat on. So, always kind of been around cars growing up. Um, and when I got the opportunity to buy my own car um, and come racing, that's exactly what I did with my Peugeot. Um, it's a really unique event and for it to be the first urban motorsport event for such a long time was a really exciting opportunity. So I really wanted to come and try it and do something a bit different. Um, I think funding sometimes can be quite a challenge. It's an expensive sport. Um, however, you kind of get through, you know, it's a really big community and, and people help out where they can. Um, there's obviously more events you'd love to do, but it's just kind of having that balance. Um, so not done any championships, but have done rallies in the past. Um, so originally this was a rally car and then converted it to a sprint car about two or three years ago. Um, so when I was very young, I actually raced against somebody called Romeo from the So Solid crew. Um, kind of showing my age a little bit now. Um, and actually beat him. I was only 15 at the time and I beat him. So yeah, that was a, a proud moment. Um, I think it's brilliant, uh, such an exciting event and to have it in a city centre like Coventry means that just normal people that wouldn't kind of see this motorsport actually get to experience it. So yeah, really exciting, really raises the profile of motorsport and amateur motorsport as well. You know, you don't need loads of money to compete, just come and have a play in whatever you've got. It's always good to see where you can pitch against the teams that are professional. Um, it's always good to see if maybe what you've homegrown can compete with those as well. Um, I think it's such a different challenge to what you would normally expect from like a, a racetrack or maybe a gravel track. Um, it's definitely a, a different opportunity and to do it in such a safe and structured way as well is it's a really great thing. With Stacey winning her class at the end of the day, she is one of many happy racers. However, one driver who had been looking forward to this day for a long time missed out on running in day one. My car didn't make it to the grid yesterday because as I get older, my aversion to risk becomes slightly higher. And the build of the event and the circuit on Friday night um, went a little bit wrong and didn't go to plan, which meant that we essentially were still building the track about seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and as a consequence, I didn't go to bed at all yesterday, so I decided to err on the side of caution and not drive. Yeah, we had um, quite a good day. It was quite stressful yesterday, but um, we managed to get resolve all the issues that we had on Friday night. Yesterday ran clockwork. Last night I had enough sleep, so I feel a lot happier today. So I've entered into the sprint, the cars passed scrutineering. Um, we're just getting a few of these demonstration runs out of the way, then I'm looking forward to taking part in the sprint. The amount of work that it's taken to get Coventry Motor Fest as a festival to this point, I can't even begin to tell you how many hours, blood, sweat and tears, so many people have put into this event. It's taken five years of negotiation, of interpretation, of lobbying to be able to get us to a point where we can have street legal motorsport in a, an English city street uh, for the first time since 1990. I'm immensely proud of the work we've done, immensely proud of the team. So with the event over for another year, thoughts turn to what the future holds for the Coventry Motor Fest. I think in terms of the future of Motor Fest, I think what we've got here is a really successful formula. Um, we definitely have aspiration to be building a full circuit and to be holding um, a full you know, wheel to wheel racing in the city. It's always been a status aspiration of the event. Uh, but the question is, what racing do we bring? Now Birmingham, Birmingham has chucked its hat into the Formula E ring. Um, for us, we could do Formula E. We know that we could do Formula E here. We know we could do it really easily, but actually, could we be doing something else that is sort of even even better? One of the things we want to do is stay connected with the grassroots. So, you know, we, we've had discussions with British Touring Car uh, about whether we do something with them in the future. The big question for us is, do we, does that fit in with the Motorfest weekend or does that become something else? So we know we want to grow the event. We know that we want to grow uh, we want to grow the motorsport activity at the event. Right now, we're the only urban sprint in the UK and that in itself is a really cool thing.
It's, it's a challenge. It's, you know, certainly operating at a British touring car level, there's only 32 cars on the grid, um, made up of probably 14 teams. Um, you know, it's, it's, unless you've been there, you will never truly understand just how hard it is to win a race. Um, and this year we've won three already, won it every single round, and you know, that feels pretty special. It's not about the points and the prizes. It's not about the, you know, kind of trophies, because they're all plastic and rubbish at this level. Um, racing for me genuinely is just a group of friends coming together and sharing time and we're all into cars, we're all into kind of racing, we're all into modifying the cars and trying to gain performance and track driving um, and to have this kind of group of friends that we're not geographically close, we don't live close to each other. You know, I'm in Coventry, we've got people in Doncaster, we've got others up in Harrogate, we've got guys in Derby, guys from down south. You know, we're all close friends and we all come together on a race weekend, race weekend and we break bread together, we share time together and we race together. And that's the key thing for me, it's the camaraderie that you get on a race paddock. It's, for me, it's, it's everything about it. It's not necessarily what happens on track. Um, during the race weekend. It's that camaraderie which I really love and I really enjoy and that's what racing is to me.